Hello everyone, my name is Tom Barry and I am the grounds manager at Greens Farms Academy in Westport, Connecticut. Uh, today I am excited to talk to you about managing lawns and turf grass areas without the use of pesticides and using organic methods as well as controlling and managing turf grass pests without the use of uh, traditional pesticides. One of the first things that we will be discussing are the steps to create healthy turf grass. Uh, this starts off with uh, turf grass selection. So choosing the proper turf grass for your site conditions. Uh, this is obviously going to be based on certain variables in terms of soil types and, and sun versus shade, uh, irrigated, not irrigated, what the intended use for the grass is, uh, as well as we're going to take in environmental considerations. So which grasses are the best in terms of requiring the fewest inputs, fertilizers, pesticides, things like that. Before determining what your lawn and, and turf grass area needs, it's very important that we do soil testing. And so soil testing, we should be looking at a couple different things. We should be looking at not just the pH and the uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium, those things. Uh, that's important. That is part of a, a standard nutrient analysis, which we can get done at our local labs, soil testing labs. Uh, it doesn't necessarily tell you everything, though. We don't see the whole picture. So there's other testing that we, we, we should be looking at. Physical testing. How, what is the soil made up of? Sand, silt, and clay. How much organic matter content can tell us a lot about the soil. And then lastly, looking at the, the biology of the soil, the life of the soil. What are our populations of microbes, of uh, bacteria and fungi in the soil? Once we know the background, the baseline for our soils by doing our testing, we can determine our fertilization program. Do we need to fertilize at all? That's something that we should think about before we start developing a fertilizer program. What's the reasoning we're fertilizing? A lot of turf grass require supplemental nutrients from fertilizer because uh, they're not adapted to certain environmental conditions or you're getting beat up by a lot of traffic or they just need uh, extra amount of nutrition. But we'll talk about what's a good fertilizer program for your organic lawn and talk a little bit about why these four step or these step programs aren't necessarily the best method for developing a uh, fertilizer program because they look at all, all lawns, all turf grass systems as being the same when there's obviously a lot of variables. So talk about what a site specific fertilizer program should look like. Uh, we'll get into talking about mowing, very simple, Every day, every time you're mowing, you should be following these rules, regardless of whether you're managing turf grass organically or non in a conventional manner. Uh, irrigation. Is irrigation absolutely necessary for all turf grass situations? The most sustainable method for irrigating is not irrigate at all. Turf grasses can go dormant during dry, hot, dry periods and survive and come back when the rainfall starts increasing and temperatures start getting more desirable ranges. Um, but there are situations we might need irrigation. Maybe example being a client who wants to keep their lawn green year round. Those are considered our primary cultural practices because they're done very frequently. The next few are, are considered to be our secondary cultural practices because uh, they're not done as often. Uh, they are just as important and in fact under a organic uh, turf care or lawn care program they're going to be required to be a little more intensive because rather than turning towards a pesticide uh, we're going to need to alleviate underlying conditions. So when we see a weed we don't just go and spray the weed with an herbicide. We think, okay, well, why are these weeds proliferating? Why are they spreading and doing so well? And our turf grass isn't. One of those secondary cultural practices is aerification. This is, this is a very common one, uh, especially on heavily trafficked areas. When the soil is getting compacted, uh, we want to go and do uh, aeration to help alleviate that soil compaction. Uh, and then one of the last ones I'd really like to focus on is for an organic lawn is the importance of overseeding. Uh, since we can't use herbicides, uh, overseeding really is going to be our best method for keeping out troublesome weeds. Uh, by getting more desirable species of, of seed in there that can outcompete the, uh, the, weed, the weed species. And the best way to do that is, is by getting that seed into the soil. And, and there's different methods that we'll, we'll get into talking about how to overseed. Uh, and then lastly, I will talk about managing pests. And a lot, of, a lot of the big things we've learned over the years at, at Greens Farms Academy with certain pests on lawns and in our athletic fields is, is really thinking outside the box. 
it has presented a challenge not being able to use pesticides, but at the same time, it, it's allowed us to think in different ways, maybe even better ways. Uh, so hopefully that was uh, inf informational for you, and I look forward to presenting to you uh, the full story. All right, stay healthy.